Well, good morning. Good. Uh, you guys visitors with us today? Nice to see you. <laughs> it is good to see you. If you are a guest or a visitor with us this morning, a special welcome to you. And uh, as I adjust my mic, I pray that God will just bring us all closer to him. All of you online, i got to remember where the camera is now. God's blessings to you and welcome to worship. Um, I'm Pastor Mike and it is a, a pleasure and an honor to share God's word with you today on a very special day on the church calendar called All Saints Day. You may notice that the altar looks a little bit different. We have one single flower in remembrance of those in our lives, those who have been called home to glory. So today is a day within the Lutheran Church that we celebrate those who have gone home to our Lord in the faith. And we'll talk much more about that as the day goes on. But I do have a couple brief announcements. Um, if you notice that uh, yesterday the, um, the flyer went out, the Friday information flyer went out. Um, so you, uh, since we've gone to a monthly newsletter, which we got the new one out today, if you did not pick one up, uh, there's one in the narthex on the, the little kiosk there. There is a lot going on here, and I just want to give you a couple of the highlights. Uh, one is Operation Christmas Child. You see all the boxes up here? Well, that's not even close to being all the boxes because by God's grace, we had committed to 200, and we have exceeded that. So to God be the glory for that. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's interesting that we still have a couple of weeks left, so if you would still like... Uh, to get a box, you can go to Hoppy Loppy and pick one up or just get a shoe box, any shoe box, uh, load it up with the toys and then we'll get you the little stickers that can go right on top of it. Correct, Brad? Yep, absolutely. Or see this guy over here. He knows everything about this. So thank you, Brad, for all the hard work you've done on that. But I just want to draw your attention to a couple quick things. Uh, immediately following the worship service is coffee and donuts in the fellowship hall. And then my Bible study starts uh, at about 1045. So you're welcome to come to the Bible study. And you've already prepped. You've already studied for it. You have. Because we teach what I preach today. So whatever the sermon is, that's what we kind of unpack and really go into great detail. So if you're anything like me, usually when the pastor's done preaching, you've got more questions than when you walked in. And that's a good place to ask them. So uh, we have... Um, on the new email, you may notice a little section uh, that Peg put in. It's called, Where Do You Fit In? Now, quite often, we're looking for things to do within the church. Well, right there is where you can kind of look and see what's available, where you can serve God's house. Uh, just go there. Uh, either call me or call the church office or call Peg in the back there. And uh, also, the last thing, uh, since we're going back to coffee hour afterwards, we do need those who uh, would like to help with that to Maybe bring a treat or something. We're not getting elaborate. We're just, you know, you know, cookies and maybe donuts, you know. And uh, but the sign-up sheet is right on the uh, the wall right there in Narthex. So if you'd like to help out with that, please do sign up. Anything else, Peg? Did I miss? Okay. Yes, you may. You guys may uh, recognize this guy, Hector Sanchez. He happens to be the congregational president. Um, What you, could, you, could you use the microphone because the online can hear you better? I, I, I do have to share that uh, travel soccer is a very amazing thing. You get to know a lot of South Florida from Tampa all the way south, weekend <laughs> after weekend. Um, <laughs> so um, as far as the announcement, it was out on this week's announcement. Um, the uh, church... Uh, voters meeting will be the first Sunday of December. That's December 6th. Um, we are looking for nominations for both the position of secretary for the church council and for president. As far as uh, secretary, uh, Nancy has now been serving for going on six years and she will not be uh, uh, signing up for the nomination this year. I have served now for two years. I will be in the nomination ballot, so I'm not running away. Uh, but still, we do need to open it up for nominations for uh, both positions. So if you'd like to put your name in the hat, by all means, 
uh, you can reach out to me. My contact information is in the back of the bulletin. Um, so you feel free to contact me uh, or anyone in the church council. Thank you. What's that? Uh, no, 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 no mail. Thank you, Jim. Thank, thanks, Hector. And again, December 6th, we will be having the voters' assembly meeting. Uh, we will Zoom that. We will send out invitations. So if you're unable to make it or if you're out of town or those of you online, you can attend. Uh, you also can vote as long as you have audio or at least some kind of a camera so we can see you raise your hand. So that's very important. Thank you for that. So with that, we got all the business out of the way. What do you say we praise our Lord today? If you're able, please rise for our opening hymn, uh, the one of the classics, As the Deer from Psalm 42. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, let's just take a moment as we leave all the busyness of the world outside, as we go to our Heavenly Father and confess those things in our life that perhaps separate us from his love. So as the body of Christ, let us join together and confess our sins unto God, our Father. Sue? Sue? Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have not done right. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Friends, the wonderful news this morning is our Heavenly Father has heard our prayer of confession. And in his mercy has sent his Son to this earth to die for you. So as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, 
the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Begin with the Old Testament reading, which is Psalm 42, 1 to 5. As the deer pants for stream of waters, so my soul pants for you, God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. Why people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you so downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my Lord. This is the word of the Lord. God. Now for the New Testament reading, Ephesians chapter 1, 3 to 14. Praise be to God, the Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realm with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world holy and blameless, in his sight, in love. He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To praise the glorious, pra to praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given to us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished upon us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery in the will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven on earth under Christ. In him, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who was a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Friends, if you're able, will you rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel? The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you. And friends, this will also serve as the basis for the message today. This is Jesus' sermon. Uh, we commonly know this as the Beatitudes. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people insult you 
or persecute you falsely and say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. As we continue our worship, we continue in the theme of All Saints Day, as we reflect on those in our lives who have been called home to glory. Our opening, our hymn of the day is the Lutheran Service Book. If you are following online at home, 677, verses 1 through 3. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, what a blessing it is to be with you this day. Lord, clearly there are some of us that are suffering and grieving the loss of a loved one, a family member, or a dear friend, or perhaps someone that we didn't even know. So Lord, as we come to you today. We come to the foot of the cross and lay this worry at your feet. And pray, Lord, that you would bathe us with the promise of eternal life through the faith of Jesus. So, Lord, as we gather together today, pour out your blessings upon us in the precious name of your Son, our Lord, Jesus. Amen. Well, once again, good morning and welcome. I know we got some new faces here. A special welcome to you. And if you're a visitor with us or if you're just coming back from up north, welcome. Those online, God's blessings and peace to you as well. This is kind of a unique day on the church calendar, isn't it? All Saints Day. Frankly, a lot of people don't really understand it, especially if you're new to uh, maybe you don't usually just go to church that much or perhaps you've been to a different church that doesn't necessarily recognize All Saints Day. No, we don't necessarily, and I had this question this past week and I thought it would be important that I address it. No, we don't pray for the dead because through faith, Scripture tells us to be absent from the body is what? To be present with the Lord. So through faith, we rejoice where they are. But do we grieve? Yeah. We miss our friends and loved ones, don't we? I know I do. However, this is a day to celebrate. It is a day to rejoice. And as I pointed out earlier, we have a kind of an empty altar, but we have one flower. That is to signify the saints of God. The saints of God. Hmm. 
a little confusing sometimes what that really means. So God's blessings to you on this day we call All Saints Day. As I said, it's a day to remember those who have been called home to glory. It's a day that we give thanks to our Lord for those whom he has given to us, even perhaps if it was for just a short time on this earth. It is a day that we rest in a promise. A promise. A promise that through our faith in Christ Jesus, we will see them again. Hallelujah. That is just incredible. Today in churches worldwide, we celebrate and we come together to remember the saints. But have you ever really wondered what is a saint? What is a saint? See, typically when we think of a saint, we think of those very special, those very unique people that hospitals and churches are named after, right? St. Peter, yeah. Well, or we may think of those 12 men that used to hang around with our Lord. Boy, they were saints, weren't they? Or how about some of those great women of faith, Ruth, Esther, Lydia, what, what incredible role models they were for us. Or maybe we'll just move forward to more modern times. Ever hear the name Mother Teresa of Calcutta? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, you look up Saint in the dictionary and boy, there's her picture, absolutely. But maybe something a little bit different. A few years ago, there was a young girl by the name of Rachel Scott. She just went to school one day, a normal day at school. And unfortunately, a group of evil men took weapons to the school. You might have remember Columbine High School. Yeah. And they put a gun to her head. And they asked Rachel to proclaim her faith in Jesus Christ. She didn't hesitate. She proudly declared her faith in Jesus. And she was shot as a result. That's a saint. However, when we look through the Bible, we see a lot of different characters, both good and bad. And Martin Luther had a great teaching, a great formula, if you will. And I guess if you were basically going to summarize the Reformation, you could do it in Martin Luther's formula. Where Martin Luther taught, simul justus er peccat. Now, those of you who don't remember your grade school Latin, <laughs> it simply means we are sinner and saint at the same time. So using Luther's formula, we look through the scriptures on this All Saints Day, and we look at others that we might consider in that category of being a saint, and we might include people like, how about uh, King David? King David, oh yeah. This is a guy, he wrote so many great psalms, psalms that still give us comfort and peace today, so many years later. And let's face it, David was a powerful leader. He led his people to follow the God of Israel. He always would, would, would hold the covenant of God's promises up in front and direct people to them always. But David... <laughs> He had some skeletons in his closet, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you look at all of David's life, then we need to remember that little incident with that, uh, what was her name? Uh, yeah, Bathsheba, wasn't it? Yeah, Bathsheba. See, David's sin and his lust and his adultery eventually led to murder. So if that's the standard for a saint, a saint well, then I think it now it takes on a whole new dimension. It kind of opens it up for some of us. Well, what about Rahab? Remember Rahab? We read about her in Joshua chapter 2. Now, I don't know if you remember the occupation of Rahab. Anybody? 
She was a prostitute, yes. She was a prostitute. But she helped the people of Israel in their mission to take possession of the promised land. And if you look, if you read through Scripture, she is proclaimed throughout Scripture of one who was faithful and trusting in God. And it is so often mentioned when they're talking or trying to find an example of somebody who was faithful and loves the Lord, Rahab is also often used as that example. So as I said, around the world today, we celebrate All Saints Day. And we might sit back now, especially with the single flower, and we might reflect on some of those people in our lives. We also might think about some of their imperfections. Because if we look at some of our friends and family members, they weren't exactly perfect, were they? Well, none of us are. And that's why I love, one of my favorite quotes is by a guy named Nelson Mandela. Nelson says, I'm not a saint, unless you think a saint is a sinner who keeps trying. Yeah, guilty on that one. But just like our Bible heroes, we look at all of these, and yes, they were saints worth remembering. Because in God's eyes, despite any of their shortcomings, despite their unfaithfulness at times, despite their sins, their unwillingness to follow God's commands, by the blood of the Lamb, we are all washed white as snow. What an incredible promise that is. So, just who are saints? You may be wondering. Well, a saint is one who is declared by God to be a saint. A saint is one who was, as we heard in, by David in our epistle reading, one who was given the inheritance to the kingdom of heaven. One who has been marked by a seal by the Holy Spirit. Perhaps some of you have been to a baptism. When the pastor will hold the young child or the adult at the baptismal font and he will make a sign of the cross on their forehead and on their heart as one redeemed by Christ. What an incredible experience that is. But to that, friends, this identity given by the pastor or the priest cannot be tainted or can never be taken away. When we are declared saints by God, we are then directed to live a life according to this title, one free of sin, one free... Yeah, I'll just stop right there because that's the hard part. It's funny because so often in Paul's letters to the churches, he talks about this very thing. He reminds them of their responsibility, encourages them to live in accordingly because he continues to remind them of the realities of God. For example, Paul writes to the church in Ephesus, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked with him with a seal, the promise of the Holy Spirit, who is a deposit, our inheritance, until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. We see this played out in great detail in the gospel reading today, the the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5 where Jesus is declaring, despite all of the issues in your life, despite all of the problems that you're having, despite all of the sin, all of the, all of the skeletons in your closet, do you love the Lord Jesus? Then yours is the kingdom of heaven. Even if you are poor, even if you are broken, even if you are persecuted, even if you are lost... Jesus assures you that yours is the kingdom of heaven. Because you trust in the Son of Man 
So blessed are you even when people hate you. We are going to go into great detail in this, in the Bible study that follows the donuts. <laughs> hey, I'm pointing out the highlights of the day, right? But in Matthew chapter 5, verse 12, Jesus says that we are all blessed, even in those tough times of our lives. Anybody here have any rough times recently? Anybody? Nobody? Nobody? Just one. Two? Maybe two? Maybe three, four? Okay. Come on. We all have. Absolutely. We all have times. And that brings us to the flip side of this. Because on the flip side of this, and this may bring in somebody that you know, maybe a family member or neighbor or co-worker, somebody that you know, Jesus says, well, he declares, woe to those who think they've already made it. Anybody know any people that they think they're just so successful that they don't need anything else? They finally made it. Well, Jesus says, ooh, back the truck up, pal, because woe to you. Those whose life situation suggests that they have already gotten everything that they need. Jesus tells them in Luke chapter 6 that they feel they don't need God. Okay, fine. That's all right. They feel that they've already got everything they need. Well, guess what? The Bible says you have got your reward already. Because basically for them, this is as good as it gets. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I cannot wait to be in my Lord's presence. This, yeah, this is great, but it's so much better. However, blessed are those who recognize their identity. Blessed are those who realize and have a dependence on our Lord. Blessed are those who are the saints of God. And blessed are those whom painful and difficult things happen to you for Jesus' sake. I'm reminded of all of those persecuted Christians around the world that have given their life to share the gospel of Jesus. So the Beatitudes is a group of promises, but it's for all of us. Not simply because we're lacking or not simply because we're mourning the loss of a loved one, but because the very fact that our needs and our sorrows direct us back to the cross because we see that our need is there and it would cause us to turn from ourselves and turn back to Jesus. This is why in a few minutes when we go to the Lord's Prayer, we're going to say three words that are going to be very powerful. Thy kingdom come. When you say those words today, I pray that God touches your heart. Because those three simple little words give us the assurance of God's promise and his peace. Because the reality in this world, we do weep for those who are ill. We weep for those who are hurting. We weep for those who are, well, frankly, even dying or near death. Because we know that their life is not yet complete there is still pain because when we, were, when we are with our Lord, he makes us a promise that there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying. And we weep today for those who are without hope because they have no assurance of the immeasurable riches of which Jesus speaks. So friends, let us remember that Jesus tells us here that when we let the situations of this life determine who we are, we will have deep anguish. Hmm. But when you let God determine who you are, you will be greatly blessed. Because who we are 
is already determined by our faith in Christ Jesus. Because we are children of God. We are saints. So in closing, let me just kind of tie this all together. Because I want us to remember that when we let our, our, our poverty, our hunger, our sadness, our lack of opportunities, or just, just the circumstances of life in general, be the final word about the meaning or the significance of our life, you will indeed be hopeless and in despair. But when you let God have the final word about the meaning, about the significance of your life, you will experience great joy. When the world dictates your happiness, <laughs> you're vulnerable to the evil one. That's a fact. But through your faith in Christ Jesus, you have been given a gift. You now have been given the ability to not let your enemy have the final word or the final say-so in who you are in this life. Because, friends, we have been declared saints. And this fact has been made real, made real and substantiated and proven right here at the baptismal font. Because you have been marked as one redeemed by Christ. And a saint is not someone, by the way, who by his or her own reason or strength has achieved any greatness, but rather a saint is someone whom God has declared a saint by his grace. Because it is God and not the world who will have the final say-so in who you really are. The prophet Jeremiah declared this for all of us. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. And by the way, these are plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Yeah. That's why one of my favorite quotes of all time is... Every sinner has a past, but every saint has a future. Amen. Father, we thank and we praise you for the future given us through our faith in Christ Jesus. With all the saints who have gone before us and all the saints who will come after us, let us all together lock arms and rejoice this day in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Friends, we uh, now will uh, rise and we will proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. So if you are able, please stand. And I have but one question to ask you this morning. And who do you believe? I believe. Please be seated. And friends, at this time, we will receive the offering for the continued building of our Lord's kingdom.
with us. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you. We thank you for all that you give us each and every day, and we gladly now give back a portion for the continued building of your kingdom. Friends, if you're able, let us rise for prayer. Almighty and eternal Lord, we thank you for the power of forgiveness. Lord, help us to forgive everyone who hurts us. Help us bless those who hurt us, who persecute us, who say all kinds of evil against us. Help us, Lord, set all of those free and release them to you. Lord, help us to walk in righteousness, in peace, and in joy, demonstrating your life here on this earth. Help us to be kind and compassionate, but most of all, Lord, forgiving others just as you have forgiven us. Even though this day, Lord, we grieve the loss of our loved ones, let us rejoice that through their faith in Christ Jesus, they came home to you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we gather together and we pray for the concerns of the church. We pray for those things in our life that we can't do it without you. So Lord, we pray for those who are experiencing some pain and need your touch of healing. Lord, we pray for Tony. We pray for Jan and for Haley and for Sadie and for Peter. Lord, we pray for Bob. We pray for Jan. We pray for Tom and Suzanne. We pray for Pat and for Kathy, for Wayne. Lord, receive the prayers for Lynn and Janet and Bill and Vera, for Sandra. And Lord, there are so many in our lives that need your touch of healing, need your touch of comfort, or just simply need to know that you are near. In the quietness of our hearts, we raise these names to you. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for our church our staff, our teachers, all of our students, their families, all of our members, and all of our guests. Lord, we pray that your hand of grace will protect and guide us each and every day. Lord, we thank you for the safety that is provided by our police, our first responders, our military. We thank you, Lord, and we pray for their protection and Lord, we thank you for all the veterans that have served us, many of which never returned home. And around the world, Lord, there are so many missionaries, so many persecuted Christians that put their faith on the line to boldly defend their Lord. Protect them, Lord. Protect their families. Build their missions. Build the reliance on them to come and share the gospel of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. But Lord, this is the day in which we remember all of the saints that have been called home to glory. We now read the names of those that have gone and died in the faith. Terry Hall, Shirley Rosberg, Betty Mayer, Graham Norton, Maria Castellanos Ochoa, Gloria Coglazer, Bob Nidde, Ernest Dykinga, Mary Love, Richard Greenhill, Tom Rotelli, Harriet Flynn, Lorraine Nelson, Mary Murphy, Doug Goody, James and Beverly Fryer, 
Joe Star Haley, Larry Yo, Crystal Bullock, Colin Meyer, Jan Forbach, John Resson, Helmut Gerda Gruel, Shirley McGee, Jerry Kolbitkus, Paul Bruss, Wendy Gross, Barbara Jensik, Gary Kosovich, and Janko Pamsik. Gracious Lord, may they rest in the gentle arms of Jesus. May you give comfort and peace to those of us who have been left behind. We thank you, Lord, for the promise of eternal life with you. Though this day may be a, a time of sadness, it is also a time that we rejoice in the promise of eternal life with you. So gracious Lord, we give you thanks as we offer the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is kingdom, and power, and glory, forever and ever. This may be a, a time uh, of difficulty for some, maybe a time of sadness, but it is also a time of rejoicing in the promise that through our faith in Christ Jesus, he will wipe away every tear. No longer will be there be sickness or sadness. It'll be a time of eternal joy. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We have selected a special closing song for the saints.
Friends, go in peace and serve the Lord.